Bien domingo por la mañana y viviendos a la hora de Escuela Dominical con John Witch. Morning, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday School Hour. Glad to see you guys all back here from last week. Uh, today we're going to be going over a new lesson, and I'm glad that you guys are here. Again, as we pray, uh, be praying at home. Be praying for the things that, that the needs that you see and that you know are out there. Uh, be lifting up the church, the church universal, our, our government, our leaders. Um, and be lifting up each other. Be lifting up the soldiers and the first responders and all the essential personnel who are, who are out there still have to be out there. Um, they don't have the luxury of uh, staying home like some of us do. So be lifting them up that God would just keep them in His graces and protect them and keep them safe. If you'll just join me in prayer, uh, we'll get started. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for this wonderful day and for all the blessings that you've given us, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your eternal grace that you've shed upon us, Heavenly Father, and given us the chance to come together and to just dive into your word and to learn more about you and about your character and to learn more about your story and how it plays into our lives, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this time. I pray that you would just send your Holy Spirit to be with each and every one of us as we go through this lesson. And I just pray that you would open our hearts so that we may get something out of today's lesson. Something that we can take with us and apply in our own lives, Heavenly Father, and that we can, we'll be able to remember for years to come, Heavenly Father. Just help us to write these words on our heart as we go through these trying times. I ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So just a couple things I want to touch on. Um, just like today, you know, we have this video, so I want, I want you guys to be letting your friends know, you know, log on, check out this video, talk about the things that we talk about, um, grow your faith, grow the things that you know of God to be true, grow those things so that you have them, just like we talked about last week, writing those words on your heart so that you know exactly how to respond to things and how, that you know what you know and you believe what you believe and why you believe that. Um, also on Wednesday nights we have our Zoom calls. Uh, we're still having our youth group. We're meeting just a little bit different so make sure let your friends know, let your families know. Be logging into those. This is another interaction, another opportunity for interaction that we have and I would just love to see all of you guys there. Please be chiming in, uh, contributing to the conversation, contributing to the learning. Just get on there and check it out. Be with us. Even though we can't be together physically, we could still be together on the internet and in spirit. So just uh, with that in mind, we'll go ahead and get started. Gritos. Okay, so today I just wanted to kind of uh, give a little bit of a shout out to those who commented in the section from last week on the video. Uh, Stacy and Julie, I really appreciate your guys' comments, the discussions that you guys had at home. Christine, Clara, Sean, I, I really enjoyed hearing your guys' comments on the lesson and what you guys uh, discussed and how, how you understood the lesson from last week, how you applied it. Also, with the Wood family, Jonathan, I know Christine mentioned you sang a song to them, a VeggieTales song, so I'm going to need to see... Um, a replay of that song, so if you could go ahead and record that, that'd be great. If you like to talk to tomatoes, um, if you like to talk to tomatoes, um. Um, or you could do it in person whenever we get back together, that'd be great too. We love Veggie Tales here. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to uh, Barb, also posted in the comments um, the importance of you know knowing God's word, writing those words on our hearts so that we can respond to the challenges that come up day to day um, but also just having those words on our hearts and how important that is knowing God's Word so I thank you guys for doing that again I encourage everybody that watches this video put your comments in there uh, be talking about the discussions that you're having the things that you're learning uh, even put in there things that you maybe don't understand or that you'd like to talk more about put that in there and then we'll talk about that more 
um, through the videos and then definitely when we come back together. Okay, so there's a link um, on this video. I want you to go watch that video. Uh, whoever you're watching with, watch the video and then come back. It's going to tie into the lesson for today. So it's very important that you watch the video and get a good understanding of what we're going to be talking about. Okay, so you should have just watched the video from Nacho Libre. Nacho is someone that we all know and love, and if not, you should have seen him now. But there are some things that we can take away from that video. Nacho was a lot like Jacob. Both were stuck in who they thought they were supposed to be instead of who they truly were. Jacob was given a name that he felt he needed to live up to but it left him fighting the wrong battles most of his life. In the clip, Nacho finally discovers his true calling and identity by wrestling Ramses the Great, the great wrestling champ. So too, Jacob finds his true identity and calling after wrestling with God of the universe, with the God of the universe. We're going to read about that a little bit later. I have another option that you, can, uh, you guys can do at home as you're social distancing by yourselves at home. Obviously, um, this is something that you gotta decide if you wanna do or not, but just a little fun th creative thing to get the creative juices flowing. I want you guys to have a thumb wrestling tournament, right? You're probably not gonna have an all out battle like, uh, like Jacob did or like Nacho did, but you guys can have a thumb, you know, a thumb battle right there in the house just to get you in the mind of a, you know, a battle, wrestling with somebody. So go ahead and take some time now and go ahead and do that and let me know how it turns out. Okay, so how many of you know the story of Jacob and Esau? I'm sure you probably saw it up here already, but who knows that story? For those of you who don't know, I'm going to give you just a little bit of the backstory on who Jacob and Esau were. So Jacob and Esau were twins. They were the, the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Isaac is the son of Abraham, and Jacob and Esau were the twin sons of Isaac and Rebekah. So because Esau was born first, he was the legal heir to the family birthright. Esau was a skillful hunter, and, his, and, he, and Esau was Isaac's favorite son. Jacob was a plain young man, and he was his mother's favorite son. When it was time for Isaac to give his blessing, Jacob and his mother came up with a plan to deceive Isaac into blessing Jacob instead of Esau. Jacob disguised himself as Esau and brought Isaac the meal while Esau was still out hunting. In light of Isaac's poor eyesight, thinking it was Esau, he instead gave his blessing to Jacob rather than Esau. Now when Esau came home, and he, he found out that his blessing had been given to Jacob, he was furious, he was angry, he was so mad, he even, he even threatened to kill Jacob. So Jacob did what just about anybody would do if they've been threatened, right? If they've been threatened to be killed, he fled. All right, this story we can find in Genesis, Genesis chapter 27, verse 1, through Genesis chapter 28, verse 7. So if you need to, I would like you guys to go ahead and pause the video now and go to this section and read that story for me. Okay, so go ahead and do that now. Okay, so Jacob's name has been translated as could mean he deceives. We see this in Genesis chapter 25 verse 26. It also says that he came out right after Esau grabbing his heel. So Jacob has also been um, translated as meaning heel grabber or to follow or to circumvent. Um, this is, these are just some of the names that we see um, that Jacob was given and the meaning of his name that throughout the, the rest of the story, these are, you know, labels that he has to overcome. Eventually, you know, he, the only way to overcome these is with an encounter with God, um, with our God of the universe, right? Okay, so now we're going to read, uh, we're going to read out of Genesis chapter 32 verses 22 through 32. So if you can, go ahead and turn there now. Get out your, you know, your smartphones or 
Uh, if you want, you could also grab a Bible. Um, you grab your Bible. This is the best way to do it, right? We're gonna we're gonna be in Genesis, like I said, first book of the of the Bible, first book in the Old Testament, first book of the Bible, and we're gonna be in chapter 32. So go ahead, Genesis chapter 32, and we're gonna be starting in verse 22. It says in 22, That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. That's the word of the Lord, amen. Okay, so here's that same passage out of the New American Standard Bible. Now he arose that same night and took his two wives and his two maids and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and he sent across whatever he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of his thigh. So the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. He said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him and said, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. Now the sun arose upon him just as he crossed over Peniel, and he was limping on his thigh. Therefore to this day the sons of Israel do not eat the sinew of the hip, which is on the socket of the thigh, because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the hip. Okay, so we're going to back up just a little bit real quick. Um, so we just went over when Jacob was wrestling with the angel when he was left by himself. So we're going to back up a little bit. We're going to still be in uh, Genesis chapter 32, but we're going to be in verses 1 through 12. Um, well, let's just say 1 through, 1 through 21. And this is basically the story. Uh, Jacob hears that Esau is on the road, and he wants he wants to reconcile with Esau. He wants to meet with him, so he sends all of his belonging, his possessions, all of his camels, his donkeys, his any kind of livestock that you can think of. His whole basically his whole family and possessions. He sends ahead of himself to meet Esau before Jacob was to meet him. Uh, during all this. He's telling each group of person that he's sending forward before him, he's telling them to let them know that you know, Jacob is coming, he wants to meet with him, and these are things that he's offering to Esau. Um, like I said, this whole story is in chapter 32, verses 1 through 21. So I want you guys to read this story and get a better understanding of exactly what he did, what he was doing leading up to his... Um, wrestling match with the angel of God. So go ahead and do that now. Again, that's Genesis chapter 32, verses 1 through 21. 
verses 1 through 21. So go ahead and read that now, talk about it, and then we're going to come back together. Okay, so after reading that, reading that passage, what do you think, or why do you think Jacob sent his family and his possessions ahead of him to Esau? Now let's think about this. Jacob, you know, he had left, he had ran away, right, because Esau had threatened to kill him. So now, there, you know, some time has passed. Jacob is wanting to reconcile with Esau, right? He, they're basically, they're on the same path, and they're going to come together. Jacob wants to reconcile with Esau. And Jacob, you know, he has his, his groups of people and his, his uh, livestock. They've gone forward, and he's, you know, Jacob has told Esau, you know, I want to reconcile with you, right? Here's all these things. I want to make this, I want to make this right. And his, uh, Jacob's people report back to him and say, okay, your brother's coming, right? He's coming this way, but he's, he also has 400 men with him, right? So, I mean, what do you think Jacob is thinking, right? I mean, if I know my brother who just, well, not just, but had threatened to kill me, is now coming towards me, with 400 people, 400 men, right? We know this. We know that 400 men and Esau are, are coming towards Jacob, right? There's, there's got to be all sorts of things running through Jacob's head of, okay, what is this going to look like, right? Is this going to be, is this going to be the end? Is this, I mean, is Esau going to be able to have his way? What's going to happen, right? So think about that. Why do you think he did that? What is this? Now think about also, after this has happened, right? He wrestles with the angel. Right? He's left by himself. He wrestles with the angel. And now Jacob's name is changed to Israel. Right? If you were Israel, formerly Jacob, if you were Israel, what would you have thought going forward every time you noticed your limp? Right? Every time you limped, every time you walked, you had kind of a limp, right? From the battle that you had with the angel of God. What would you think about during that time? Would you be thinking about your battle? Would you be thinking about the things that you've gone through? The things that you've made it through? Right? Also something else we've got to think about. What is the significance of the Israelites not eating the tendon that's attached to the hip in their diet going forward? Even, even today, there are, there are certain Jewish people who do not eat that specific part of the animal. Even today, there's still that, right? And Israelites... Do we understand what Israelites is? Israelites, so Israel means struggles with God or fights with God, right? Wins with God. Israelite is the people of them. So the people of Jacob, the direct line, that's who the Israelites are, right? The people of a God who fights for them. That's who they are, right? So this is this is just crucial stuff to remember in, in the... Israel's identity, right? This is a way for them to honor God. Honor the God who fights for them. What are some practices that we can do to help us remember who God is and what He has done for us? What are some things that you can do day in, day out to help you remember what God has done for you and just how much He loves you, right? The things that He's done for you, who He is, exactly who is God. How, what are some things that you can do? Talk about those things as we're going through this. What are some other practices that can help us remember that we're God's children? What are things that we can do, right? What are things that we can do? We, we talked about the Lord's Prayer, right? We've talked about that a few times. Our Father, right? Jesus told us when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father. Jesus and our Father. We are children of God. That's just one thing that you can do. Every time you say the Lord's Prayer, as God told us to, as Jesus told us to pray, that can help you remember that you're a child of God. So we're getting ready to, we're going to break now. We're going to come back and finish the second half of this lesson next week. But I want to leave you with this, uh, just something to be thinking about through the week as we come back together next week. We're going to be talking about Israel's story from here, right? Um, also, how it, how it can, how would I put this? What his story has to say for us today, how it would come into our life today, right? We know the things that he'd done in the past, everything he had done up right until 
he wrestled with the angel, right? And he is now, he's no longer Jacob, he is now Israel, right? So, how does that come into our life? So I want you to be thinking about that for next week, okay? Um, we're going to come back next week. I hope that you guys all have a wonderful week. Go, you know, go outside in your yards, enjoy God's creation. Remember, just because we're isolated at home doesn't mean we have to be isolated from God. Take this time... When things get hard, when, when things are just bombarding around you, turn towards God, right? Focus on Him. Look at Him. This is a perfect time. There's no reason to be isolated from God right now. So do everything that you can. When things get tough, that's what, that's what I do. Things barrel down around me. I focus on God. I read my Bible. I pray to Him, right? Cut out all other distractions, and we focus on God. If we keep doing that, we're going to be through this no problem. We're bigger than this. Our God is bigger than this. And I love you guys. Remember all those things. Talk about this stuff. And we'll see you right back here next week. For more information on Aztec Church of the Nazarene, please visit our Facebook page and email us. God bless.